So this final part of the tutorial will show you how to take the data, the merge file that you made earlier with your personal file inside AADR, and then it will show you how to run this on AT1 Q panel. So, as a prerequisite, make, secondly, make sure that the personal file zip that was made in the last tutorial is inside the Google Drive. So now, what we're going to do is, we're going to mount the Google Drive first. So you can simply click this option then click play and then it will ask you to connect your Google Drive sign in continue continue and it will merge well no it will let the Google call app come in so now the Google Drive is mounted you can go into the files port by the way click this to open the files otherwise it won't be open and then click on drive click my drive and attempt to find the file you have. So, in this case, the file we made earlier is here, the personal file selected zip. So, what do we now do? We simply go to the three dots here and click copy path. Then we place it here. Now we can close this. And what this will do is, it will take the, the files that we made in the last tutorial out of your Google Drive and put them inside this folder. There you go, it's already appearing. It'll take a couple of minutes. Right, now that's done, we can hit refresh. And there are the files. So, next, we need to install Admix tools. This is the program that runs Qpattern. Hit play, and it'll take 30 seconds to install. Okay, now we're done, Admix tools has been installed. So now, we have to go here. So this section is if you just want to mod pre-existing files in the data set. Recommended if you're not running yourself as coverage will be better. This is because when you merge yourself to a file, all the other, when you merge yourself to the AADR, all the other files in the AADR are limited to the amount of coverage you have. So if you only have 30% coverage, it downgrades all the other qualities and all the other files into the AADR to the same coverage. So if you're modeling a pre-existing file, so let's say you want to model um, the Indus Valley Civilization files, so sub.va2, you would simply download the data set and run that instead. However, if you're mo modeling yourself, you can use these personal merges. Today I'll show you how to model yourself, so we don't need to do that. So we can skip this part. Right, so next part is QPad and prep and running. So here I had a run that I made earlier, a while ago. But for today, we're just going to model the English.dg. So firstly, we go into the .ind. It will load, just give it a minute. And here you can see all the populations that the AADR has. If you go all the way down, you will see the personal file and you'll see three question marks. Now, if you want the personal file, you would like it to have a name, obviously. So, for example, if it's yourself, you would name it yourself. However, here, because it's a random personal file, I had my PC, I'm just going to call it personal file. The person is of English ancestry, so I can just run him as I would a normal English person. Okay, so now, this personal file, which is yourself in the data set, this is whoever you merged, you want to put as the target. So simply put, this part here, which is the family ID, you just copy it and paste it. There we go. Now for the source populations. If we want to model the English, it's not too hard. But my advice is always to download the IND file. Why? Because then when you open it, you can just use the edit find tool to just find populations quickly. So for example, if we want to model this guy as Anatolian farmer plus step plus um, Westland to gather, we can simply go find those files. So, virgin underscore n dot bg here. So we can enter that. And by the way, separate all populations of comma. So comma, then we add step. So yam line Samara, there we go. Copy, paste. Then, Lush for, for Western Discoverer. We can use Iron Nest if it does more specific to the area. There we go. 
Now the right the reference populations, aka the right populations, have to be ancestral to these guys. Obviously, I was modeling the Iron Age Algerians earlier, and they have a lot of components that aren't ancestral, so we're gonna have to remove this. By the way, the first right has to be extremely distant from all the populations, so Johua North will suffice here. So we can add Wesner. Gothias for CHG input. Sidalpino for EHG. Bruno for Western Cover. Actually, Epicurus will be better. There we go. The shock on file. Hmm, oh no. Kostenki. And then finally, Bon Coclu for AMF. And Dinar Bar C2, that was the one. So these, um, three pop these populations here in the reference are all ancestral to the populations here. Hence why we include them, because these are used to as ingredients for the populations here. You need to have all the ingredients, otherwise it won't work. The model will fail in Genstats. So next, the dataset prefix. The example here will show you what it means. So, if you have S1 IND, you simply put S1 as the dataset prefix. So how do we apply this to us? If we look here, there's a dot IND, which is the suffix, and then the personal file merge, which is the prefix. Simply put, we only want the prefix, so we copy that paste it here, and we're done. Then we select yes for all S&Ps, select no for inbreed, and hit play. Then we create the cube pattern file, add our mixed tools to path, and then we comp compute F statistics. This usually takes a couple of minutes, depends on how big your writes are. It can take up to like an hour if you have a lot of writes, so we'll be back when it's done. Okay, so that finished pretty quickly, only took a minute, that's because we only had a couple of writes. So now we can run the cube atom analysis section, so just hit play here. And we're done. And then here you can pass and visualize the cube atom output, so you can have a nice graph if you want. Just click play. And there we go, the model did pass, but it's not a strong pass, it's only 0.08p. However, as we can see, the proportions seem fine, that tracks of an English person, the Amna is quite high, so maybe we need to add A and E to the rights to make sure it doesn't inflate, which we can do soon. But if we go into the results file, then we can see the stuff I mentioned in my previous video. So, what can we see here? We can firstly see that the tail probability is here, that's the p-value. Let me just make this bigger for you guys. And then we can look at the gen stats here. So as you can see, the values are all in between 3 and minus 3. So these pass. Then the F the F4 mix, which is here. The summary is a bit high, meaning there is some unaccounted for ancestry. However, the individual populations are okay. So we can now rerun with A and E and see what happens. Paste it. Add it here, and we'll see what happens. Um, bear in mind, in the results file, you can also look at the individual F4 statistics to see what went wrong. So, in this case, a big outlier was Kothias, but obviously we don't really have many uh, Caucasian to cover samples anyway. Um, there doesn't seem to be any major outliers here, though, um, so it's a bit of a confusion. That seems to have a big negative Z score. Gravetti into Barchin. Mesolithic to Westmere. Yeah, this seems fine. 
Well, Adam, he won't see if it helps. And we'll be back. Okay, so as we can see, the F six is done. We can just hit results. Let me just remake the view button bar and file. Hit the results button. It will only take three seconds to run the analysis here. Never mind, but there we go. And play. So as you can see, adding MA1 improved the p value because A and E is ancestral to Yamnaya. And as we can see here, he gets 11% WHG, 50% Yamnaya, and 39% ANF. So, as you can see, it's pretty simple to run. You can just right click and save the image if you want to save it anywhere. Just click done. And yeah, you can use this pretty easily. Um, the only thing I would say is that sometimes you need to edit the, the IND file because sometimes, for example, in the Tufian, we only have two good quality IDs. These are I1072 and I0861. Not the duplicate version, by the way, this is, this is bad. This one. So if we want to edit them to only select the good quality files, we simply just underscore add. Underscore add. Hit save. And then if we just um, find this file in your personal computer, so in my case, it should be somewhere in downloads. There we go. Simply just copy, drop it in. And then what we'll do is we'll just replace the .ind file that was already there. And then you will have the new population here. So this will fuck up the run, by the way, because Natufian is not too ancestral. But then we can add in Israel Natufian i1072.hg. We can hit play. We can create the viewpattern file, add that next towards the path, compute the F4 statistics, and as we can see when it pops up soon, you'll see that the new edit has been added because it can now detect the Natufian file when it shows up. Yeah, so look, now, as you can see, the edit we made is right here. So that's how you can select for better quality files in your AADR merge to make sure that you're getting the best quality because the Natufian files are all low quality apart from them two and even the, these, even the two that I selected aren't the best quality. So it's important to do when there's terrible file quality involved because if you use files of low quality, it will create false p-values. Anyway, that's the conclusion of this tutorial. As you can see, it's pretty easy to use. And you can always check the results file to check GEN stats, F4 summary, whatnot. Yeah, the next tutorial will show you how to use an AT2 script that me and my friend made. This will do rotations for you automatically. And then you can put them into a, net, a spreadsheet automatically too. So that's a very useful program. AT2 is also a lot faster. So yeah, stay tuned.